Hi there, welcome to Arts at a Distance. My name is Miss Noel. I am the Arts Education Consultant with Merced County Office of Education. And I'm excited to be here with you on this Fine Arts Friday. We are gonna be doing an activity today uh, that I actually learned from a gentleman named Derek Fenner. Uh, I was at a conference in Monterey over the summer and he was one of our presenters. He, we spent a long time working on blackout poetry and I'm gonna be explaining to you guys what that is today, but it is this beautiful uh, art form that involves kind of this less is more attitude as well as a very free flowing concept of what you want your art to look like uh, just by choosing and picking out words that someone else has written out of a longer piece. So there's a lot to be done here and we're gonna do it as quickly as we can. First things first, you're gonna have to gather some materials. Uh, you definitely need one piece of paper or book for our uh, warm up and another one for our art piece. Uh, I guess you can do it on the same piece, but I'd really like the art piece itself to be a little bit separate. I did say you could use a book. I am planning on making this particular thing, which is a photocopy of a novel, it's actually Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert, that I placed on my uh, photocopy machine and therefore I'm working with a photocopy and not the actual book. But I also grabbed this book. This is a book called Diet for Dancers and I haven't looked at it in 20 plus years and I am comfortable, I've decided I've looked deep in my soul and I'm comfortable destroying this book. So uh, I definitely encourage you to ask your grownups before you decide to do anything, whether or not the book belongs to you. Other people in your family might have a use for it or might wanna pass it on somehow. So definitely don't destroy a book unless you are really comfortable in your soul. Uh, that being said, I don't think anything is too sacred to uh, destroy for the sake of art. So if you decide that you want to take a book uh, and you have permission from everyone around you, then uh, I vote yes. So I'm gonna be working with this book. I'm gonna have a pen specifically that I'm using for my uh, circling of words. But when it comes to the actual art, I'm also going to have be using what I have gathered in all of my crazy colors and art, artful accessories and materials that we have here. Okay, I've got as many of them as I could possibly find, as many of them as I could pry away from the child inside. Uh, and the reason I like to have these is because, just because we call it blackout poetry doesn't mean that it has to be all black. I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes based on your mood, you're just using a Sharpie and covering the whole thing in a really dark color. But other times you can actually create something really beautiful and colorful uh, while taking other people's words and making sure they are not part of what you wanted. This is as much about what you don't want to include as what you do want to include. So while we're gathering those, those things, uh, we are going to think about the idea of interesting words. Now, this is not something that I can particularly help you with. You are going to find some words interesting and some words not interesting, okay? And there's absolutely no reason why a grown-up can't help you with this, with this if there is someone near you that you would like to help you read the words on the page or who you are interested batting ideas back and forth with why you might find words interesting. I really like words that are interesting in my mouth. Like when I say certain words, I like the feel of them, uh, even more so than their meaning sometimes. There are some very banal, is a great word, uh, some very banal words that I actually really enjoy using and saying because I just like the feel of them. That sensation is what makes a word interesting to me. Your answer to this might be different. So what we're doing with this exercise is we're simply choosing words on the page that you find interesting and circling them. Ah. Uh, the reason for this, we'll actually, we'll go through it and then we'll talk about the reason in a second. So as I look over this page, what am I finding? I'm finding the word, or the phrase, balanced perspective. I like that. I like the word emotional responses. Let's see, spectrum is a word that I like. Mm, social support. 
intimately connected. Getting together. These are words that are jumping out with me. I'm surprised to see that what I'm enjoying here are generally speaking phrases, two word phrases. This is not something I knew before. Coping mechanisms. Stumbling blocks. Positive manner. <laughs> Solo plan. I think that's good for right now. I'm gonna, because spectrum does not go with the pattern that I ended up establishing, I'm gonna take that one out. But here is what I ended up doing, is I ended up circling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine two word phrases. Those two word phrases are balanced perspective, emotional responses, social support, intimately connected, getting together, stumbling blocks, coping mechanisms, solo plan, positive manner. And actually I'm gonna, I accidentally uh, circled a little big on the word solo plan and I included the A right before it and I, I'm gonna call that a happy accident, a solo plan. That's a three word phrase. Now the thing is that when we actually were to go through and read this paragraph, this is about the reasons for dieting and the psychological factors involved with eating disorders. I don't think I would get that based purely on the words that I pulled. Fortunately, this is not about getting what, the, what is actually on the page, but rather separating what is on the page from the phrases and the words that you actually like. So that was just an exercise in finding what popped out at us and I am fascinated by the way those go together. One more time, balanced perspective, emotional responses, social support, intimately connected, getting together, stumbling blocks, coping mechanisms, a solo plan, positive manner. <sighs> I hope you guys had a good time doing that with yours as well. I, I firmly and highly encourage you to find something that is above your reading level, uh, a journalism article, something in a newspaper, something that is uh, copied that may not be yours, but may belong to one of your grown-ups. Um, and look for circling those. Uh, definitely, again, ask them if it belongs to someone else because I don't want you, one, inter interacting with anything that's particularly uh, uh, inappropriate. I also don't want you interacting with something that, and, and potentially ruining something that they need. That being said, I know I have a ton of papers lying around that simply don't have use for me anymore. So hopefully there's something you can find. So that was a good little warm up that we did right there. Now for the rest of the time, we're gonna be working on our actual piece. For the actual piece, we do the exact same thing as we did during the warm up. Now we just have an idea of what it is we're working for. So instead of purely pulling out phrases, we're actually gonna be looking to create a poem, a structured poem. Uh, or I tend to look toward a structured poem, and my challenge to you is to look toward a structured poem. Now, if what you end up doing is pulling out phrases, I got a nice warm glow from reading what I created in this book, so I don't think that's a bad thing at all if that is the best expression of what you would like to put down or what you would like to pull out of the paper. That being said, it's a nice challenge to look through something that means nothing when you're not reading it in context and finding context that makes sense structurally. So here is what I've done with this paper. I think I showed you already. As you can see, I actually begun the artistic portion of covering by creating a shape. One side of the shape is working in oranges. The other side is working in reds and browns. And that's going to continue on as I, uh, as I draw and cover the white space outside of the words. Uh, but the reason that I actually made this is because there is a phrase that is technically on page one that I want included in page two. So that's why I made that shape and that shape is gonna continue throughout the rest of my art project. Uh, what my sentence, my poem reads as right now is, I want to be rich, you understand? This is not sick love and black magic or God, only true.
again. I want to be rich, you understand? This is not sick love and black magic or God. Only true. Now, first of all, it tells you a great deal about how I was feeling at that moment in time. Uh, this was written actually right as quarantine started, and I was very concerned with how I would be continuing to uh, make, literally make money for the family and keep roofs over the heads of the people that I love. So that was a, a, a huge uh, in, impetus for me while I was writing this. I wasn't writing it with the plan of doing... Uh, any of these art from a distance classes, I was writing it in order to simply express something. Uh, the things that I teach to you guys are also things that I use in my everyday life because they work, because they're good for me, they're good for my psychology, and they're good for my, uh, they're good for my soul. So now that I've created that, I'm going to start, we only have a few minutes to run through some general themes of this project, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue the use of line and shape, these big curves, as well as color. So what I'm gonna start with is kind of the idea, of what I'm gonna call a dystopian rainbow. Now, when I think of a rainbow, I don't only think of the shape of a rainbow, I think of very pretty colors that would be either jewel tones or in that kind of pastel range. And so when I say dystopian, what I'm thinking is that uh, almost like the negative of those colors, like you had taken a photograph and tweaked it so that there was a, a negativity to the image. That doesn't necessarily mean that the poem itself is negative, but like I said, the frame in which I was, the time, the mind frame of which I was in when I wrote it uh, does have some implications to me that, that I needed, um, that there was definitely some needs that were being unmet. So I'm gonna keep that going with my color palette here. I started simply by keeping the rainbow shape going. Now I am just filling in space around the words over here. Were I to have a little more time with you guys and these colors, I think I would maybe do this differently. But I think this is gonna work out fine for what this is. Now on to this other side, I'm gonna add in some very different, cooler, darker colors, some silvers and some grays maybe some dark blues, browns. I'll probably have a black going on over here. I'm not interested in making sure that they blend a particular way. I'm not interested in making sure that the color choice does anything except imply that the shape continues, that curve, as well as the fact that on either side of the curve is a little bit different from the other. Okay, so we've got this part of the rainbow kind of happening here, and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of this with this, let's go with this dark blue. Yeah, perfect. This dark blue is gonna make that really fill in nicely. And I'm gonna make sure that in no way are these words covered with this color. I will never ever, because what it's about for me is the words. So the colors are secondary, the designs are secondary. The words themselves are the meaning of this. When I've done this in the past with a little bit more time on my hands, I definitely find that one of the things I love doing is creating designs out of that color and that shape. I've made uh, very intricate 
flower gardens. I've made landscapes of forests and trees. I've made suns and moons. Um, I've made families and individuals, people. And because it is the words that I'm focused on, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, let myself go when it comes to the art process. I'm so glad that that happened. That was actually my timer telling me that it was time to be done. As you can see here, I've created this rainbow looking concept with the shape and the colors going on, but it is absolutely clear that there are words coming out of there. The poem that I read you earlier has been found, excavated, and brought to the front of the art piece that I've created there. I really hope that this is something you guys choose to do and uh, use in your lives. Like I said, it's really, really good for your brain. It's good for your soul. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us on this Fine Art Friday for on, at Arts at a Distance. And remember, there's only three things that I ask of you in all the world. Are you ready? Stay safe. Be happy. Make art. Bye, everybody.